everything. Hey guys, today we interviewed Nicholas Spinoza, who just graduated from a very prominent coding boot camp called Hack Reactor in San Francisco. And I mean just graduated. He graduated literally the day before he interviewed on my channel. So we're going to kind of review Hack Reactor, talks about the pros, the cons, what he learned, what he really liked, what uh, he hopes they improve upon. We're going to talk about um, his, what he hopes to achieve with uh, after going to Hack Reactor and the direction he hopes to go and anything else that we cover. And as always, we took questions at the end from subscribers. So definitely look forward to this. Very smart guy. I was really impressed uh, with him and uh, Hack Reactor as well, who only accepts about 3% of the application uh, applicants. So hope you guys enjoy this and thanks for watching. Oh, is someone going on the call? Hey, Dylan, how you doing? Good, good. Cool. Well, uh, how's how's your day going? You, you said you're in the, the East Coast, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm in Jersey, but I'm job searching in New York. So uh, yeah, I just just moved because we finally sold the house. So now I'm in a I'm in a friend's apartment. <laughs> there <laughs> until you go. I, until I move out. Nice. nice. Got a got a hey. I, I respect the grind, man. That yeah. that's the thing. Is a lot of people want to be. There's no such thing as like an overnight success. So sometimes you got to grind it out a little bit. It's all about the grind, uh, and that's I think one of the the things that will. If you choose to do a boot camp, that mentality is what is going to make you successful. Uh, I mean, I can really only speak to Hacker Actor, but I think it's probably a safe assumption to say that there is nothing in the world that you can go and do and just like plug something into your head and come out in three months and like be good at something if you don't work hard. That's 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 a very good point because I um I see people. I'm you know I'm I'm sure you do the same thing. Uh, you're you know Facebook groups and coding groups and all this sort of stuff. But I see people all the time posting like I just went to a boot camp and I lost all motivation after I graduated. I don't I don't code for like weeks at a time, months at a time. Now why why do you as someone who just graduated? You graduated like a week ago or how? how Literally so yesterday. Yesterday. All right. You're you're, <laughs> you're fresh, fresh yes. out of the boot camp. Why do you think that is for some of these people that go to boot camps? I mean, it really depends on what your motivation is going into it. Uh, I mean, like, I've sort of been tinking around with programming since, like, I did a breadboarding class in high school. So it's always been something I've been interested to. But there's a lot of people right now, and I wouldn't say this is necessarily true in Hacker Actor, but there's a lot of people looking at boot camps and looking at the statistics and seeing you know, the money that people could make after doing something for three months and looking at it purely from a financial perspective. Uh, so I, I think if that's like what your primary motivation is, maybe you're more likely to burn out if you don't get hired right away. But if you're like me and you're just like tinkering around with like cool technologies, like I, I do it for fun too. Like I, I'm going to be working with Angular 2 after this just to, just for fun. Nice, nice. So let's uh, let's dive into Hack Reactor a little bit. Why uh, why Hack Reactor? Because obviously boot camps are popping up all over the place. They're in such high demand. What what was it that kind of stood out about Hack Reactor? So I did a a lot of research. Like uh, I, I read about everything, uh, and then it was funny because I was between Hack Reactor and Dev Mountain. Mm -hmm. So I saw Matt ended up going to Dev Mountain literally like two weeks or something before I started Hack Reactor. Um, but I, I chose Hack Reactor because. You know, it there's it's obviously more expensive, and for me, uh, it's sort of important. I know that sounds like counterintuitive, but it helps me to have skin in the game, so to speak. Uh, I, I have no doubt that I or anyone could could do it without a boot camp at all, but it really helps you to be motivated. You know, when you have skin in the game, uh, and I interviewed at a bunch of places, and I was much more impressed with the interview process at Hack Reactor. It took me like three interviews to get in. It was like really hard, and that to me was really impressive. And the level of the people that were doing the interviews was was really impressive to me. So you know, after I talked to a bunch of them, that was my primary reason for choosing Hack Reactor. Nice. Now, if you don't mind me asking, because I, I if I remember correctly, Hack Reactor is a little bit more expensive. What did what did uh, it's about a three month program, right? What is it? What yes. does that run you in terms of finances? Uh, I think exactly seventeen thousand seven hundred eighty. I believe is the the number now. Okay. So, which which sounds sounds like a, a decent amount of money, but when you when you compare it with, you know, what the the numbers are throwing up and what it would compare to go and get a CS degree, it's pennies on the dollar in comparison. Yeah. So I'm 22. So I, I originally just was like, okay, I guess I'll go back to school. I was doing culinary before this for perspective, um, 
Yeah. And so I was looking at prices and, you know, the state school where I am at Rutgers, uh, my parents make decent money, so I get nothing from federal. So altogether, it's about like 19 a year. So four years of that versus, you know, 17 once was very compelling for me. Nice. Now, you said, uh, so I'm, I'm looking at your LinkedIn, right? So uh, excuse me why I kind of Facebook stalk you or LinkedIn yeah, stalk it. you. Uh, you said that you, it looks like you went to school to be uh, culinary beforehand? Yeah. So I originally started as a computer engineering. And like I, I said, I really fell in love with like logic from breadboarding in high school. And I got into to college and the only programming class that I could take for the first two years was MATLAB. I don't know if you've ever worked with MATLAB, but it's awful. <laughs> uh, it's like it's like an advanced calculator. Um, I don't think I wrote like a single if statement or a loop. And I was just like, man, this sucks. So I switched. I did culinary, went to culinary school, worked in uh, like a few Michelin star restaurants. And I really love that. But it's very hard to sustain yourself. So I had to find a happy medium. That's why I switched back. Yeah, so uh, was it, so it sounds, it sounds like it was like a money thing. Is it like, you're just yeah. like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make decent money as a, as a chef and I need a new career path. Is that kind of what propelled yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about coding is like, when, when you cook, you're really affecting a small amount of people in sort of an intimate way. But with coding, you know, you can really sort of paint with a broad brush and really like affect a lot of people, you know, whether it's like, you know, with some enterprise facing app or something like maybe more social interest. Like there's a lot of options and for directions you can go with it. Now, what would you advise for somebody who maybe is going down, went, went to a, a different path? Maybe they were a chef, maybe they um, went and got their EMT certification. What would you, what would be your advice for them if they were considering to perhaps go to Hack Reactor anywhere else? Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but free code camp and code academy. Uh, do those things a lot. And I think Matt may have given similar advice, but you know, there's a, a down pay payment necessary for all of these, all of them, I assume, if you're going to finance. Um, and if you're doing that sort of like lower pay scale job, like do free code camp and code academy while you're saving up for a down payment. And if you can get, if you feel very confident, like if you can, you know, do high order functions and stuff in JavaScript, like around that level, um, and you've saved up and you're still interested, like you're not burnt out yet, that's when I would consider it and start doing your research. So uh, it sounds like you did a little bit of prep beforehand uh, when you went, like before your interviews? Is that, is that oh, right? yeah, that's right. So I started like maybe May of last year, started teaching myself, and I, I was pretty far. And then they, they do a, a, a prep class that you can take, which for me was really helpful. Because I thought the most difficult part was getting like from being finished, like Code Academy, and, and then there's like sort of like that gap in resources to get you to like that autonomous level where you like you don't need a tutorial anymore. You could just like look at docs and do things. And for me, that prep class is really helpful to get, especially with like uh, the beginnings of functional programming with stuff like under that or under bar, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also a whole bunch of good YouTube channels, of course. Yeah, man, like this one. No, like this uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'll, uh, so I interviewed Matt about Dev Mountain a while back, and I, I asked him three basic questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the same ones, um, which was uh, what what was the one thing that you liked most about Hack Reactor? Okay, so I mean, there's a lot of things, but I think the thing I was most surprised about was how smart everyone there is. Uh, I mean, like, I've always hung out with smart people. It's always been, you know, the people that I've been interested with. But, man, everyone that is a Hack Reactor is so incredibly smart. Like, one of the, the people who is in the cohort with me has his PhD in computational mathematics from Lehigh. And he, is, he was a Hack Reactor. So, like, that's the level of intelligence everyone's at. And if you just have people, a bunch of people that are super smart in, you know, the same space, like, you're going to learn as long as you're willing to. You know, as long as you don't have an ego and you're like, hey, man, can you show me how you did that? Like, you'll learn so much, like, just by proximity. Now, what, uh, let's go in the opposite direction now. What would you say was the thing that you would, um, probably didn't like the most about Hack Reactor? Some, maybe an area where they could improve upon. Um, I would have liked a little bit more emphasis on architecture, especially, like, 
Flux and Redux on the front end. And it's sort of a very minor thing. And I, I was definitely able to learn it myself during the time. But I think that would that would be the biggest improvement that I could see. Okay. That was... And like, if some of the people don't know what that stuff is, it's just state management on the front end. Right. Nice. I kind of combined those last two because last time we, it, when I interviewed, it was like, well, what did, didn't you like? And then what what can they improve upon? And it was like, well, just improve upon what I said I didn't like, man. What yeah. A <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, the reason I format those questions was that, you know, agile, typically at the end, you uh, you do like, what worked well this week? What didn't work yeah. well? How can we improve? And I was like, oh, I just apply that to here. And uh, I just got that's like, actually a really good idea. So that, that's kind of, that's kind of what, um, you know, and I encourage people, by the way, uh, to kind of apply that when you're learning as well. So it's like right now you're looking for work in New York, and I'm sure you're still studying up every day. Yeah. And sometimes it helps to evaluate what worked, what didn't work, and what you're going to do to change that. Yeah, that's it's actually really good that you bring that up because that's how Hack Reactor schedules like the learning. Everything is in like sprints, and you have Scrum Masters. So you sort of structure learning like uh, development works in uh, like actual companies. Did, did you ever consider about maybe doing any other sort of uh, development or was web dev always it for you? Uh, I'm very pragmatic and I caught the tail end of what you were saying as I was coming in here. Uh, at, from a jobs perspective, web dev seems to be the easiest thing to get your foot in the door. Uh, although to be honest, I, I'm much more interested in like backend technologies, especially the functional languages like Haskell and Clojure and Scala. I'm sort of teaching myself Clojure just for fun, even though maybe not the most efficient thing to be doing before you get a job. But um, it seems that getting in, getting your foot in the door with like web dev technology seems to be the best bet. So that's why I went with that. Nice. Uh, so I'm looking here, and it looks like you have four projects. Are these all made while you were at uh, at um, Hack Reactor? Yes, those are all at Hack Reactor. Which, which one would you say is probably, like, are you most proud of and use the most technology? Like, if you were to show an employer, employer says, hey, show me your best project. What was it? What did you make it with? And, um, you know, what, what does it do, essentially? Uh, so, hmm, it's kind of a tough question. Because there's, there's a project that I, I really like that I think is the coolest, is Tech Trends. But it's not necessarily, like, it's the hard part is vanilla JavaScript, because you know, we aggregated data, quote unquote, web scrapes <laughs> from job boards. Uh, so that was like really challenging and really cool, uh, especially because it's sort of like a dual database design because we're dealing with like a lot of like huge scrubbed text files from websites and then, you know, rolling that up and crunching the data to get analytics. And so it's sort of like two different use cases for data that needs to be stored. But from like a frameworks perspective, uh, the last project I did rapport uh, which is an Angular 2 front end. Uh, it was challenging just because Angular 2 was ratified, and I think October like came out of beta, so yeah. it's still very new, and there's a lot of like, a lot of kinks there. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what I would say. Um, that one is just, it's like a social automation tool, so you can connect with your Facebook and your Gmail and automate like reaching out to people when you're too lazy to do it, like me. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, I, I think it's smart more. Like, a lot of people, um, there's there's this older school generation of programmers that think, like, no, you need to make everything on your own. And then meanwhile, I feel like maybe in the last 10, 15 years, it's been a little bit more accepted. Like, no, man, this guy made this whole library. I'm just going to take that. It's open source. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't reinvent the wheel, right? Yeah, exa exactly. So um, you uh, the, the way that this interview got started is you reached out to me and said, like, hey, um, you know, Hack Reactor says, you know, start marketing yourself. Can we can we talk about that a little bit? Like, I, I would love to know uh, what they like, what their their kind of philosophy is as a developer when it comes to like marketing yourself a little bit. Yeah. So the whole last week of Hack Reactor is all based on like online presence uh, and getting your your LinkedIn up to snuff uh, and that. So they'd spend a lot of time on it. There's like a, a whole team at Hack Reactor for that. We have outcomes coaches that you know all of our applications and stuff gets recorded and they can look at it analytically and see, you know, are we getting responses to applications? Are we getting past tech screens, et cetera, and sort of guide us on where, you know, where to go that way. A lot of negotiation prep. Uh, that part I was really, really impressed with. Uh, probably worth all of the all of the tuition just in the last week, to be honest. Do they have like a um, some 
some boot camps bring in like you know regional um, companies and things like that uh, to you know view your projects. Do they do anything like that? Uh, so I did remote. I think they do that on site, but mm -hmm. we have a huge uh, alumni network, and there's a bunch of companies that they're partnered with. Uh, so we get like job off not offers, but uh, like I guess discrete like opportunities through that that gets like they will pass on to the people they think are the best qualified for it as well. So there's definitely a lot of resources for that. So I didn't I didn't know that you did this remotely. I didn't I didn't realize that was part of the their uh, operation. Yes, yeah, I did remote, uh, which I would I would recommend. The reason I I did remote over on site. Uh, so I'm in Jersey, so I would have had to move to, to San Francisco and beyond just the rent and all of that. You, there's a lot of things to figure out, right? Especially if you're not from there, you have to figure out like, public transportation, how you're going to cook, how you're going to eat, you know, where you get to do your laundry, all of that. Whereas doing it remote, I was literally able to spend like 15, 16 hours every day coding for the last three months, which there's no way I would be able to do that from on site. Now, was there any challenges as doing a, a boot camp remotely? Um, there's a lot less handholding. You definitely have to, you know, it's sort of like out of the frying pan and into the fire with, you know, learning how to do things yourself. Of course, there's like a lot of resources for, for getting help. Uh, there's a great help desk resource, but the, the whole like ethos of Hack Reactor, quote unquote, is sort of, sort of to make you into that engineer that can do things himself. Cause I'm sure you, you know, you can't just go to your, you know, to the senior dev every time you, you know, have a, an infinite loop or something. Shut uh, nah, man. Every time until he tells me to fuck off. It's like <laughs> this is if you guys want to know if the senior dev wants to tell you fuck off, this is how it goes. They're they're you're talking to them and you you ask them a question, they go back to work, and then once they put their fucking earbuds in, don't ask another question. <laughs> it, means, it, means they, it means they're done with you at that point. They need to get their own shit done. Yeah. Um, but uh hey, that that you know, that's very impressive that you did it remote remotely and i'm sure i'm sure it gave you a lot of benefits and challenges at, at the same time yeah yeah there's definitely challenges you know it's a lot easier to debug something if you're just like right over the shoulder and you can like jump on their keyboard um they have it technically felt like figured out very well though uh they use like zoom which is which is a really cool video sharing it's a lot easier to share your screen than than hangouts uh and flu bits for pair programming uh but uh, there's nothing to replace you know being able to reach over your shoulder and point point at something now this is something i've always kind of uh been worried about and I've, I've recently talked to somebody about this is when you go to these coding boot camps um a lot of them are known uh regionally like you know hack reactor as you said is in like san francisco and like every all the companies down in that you know tech bubble and you know southern california in general you know like oh man this is a great a great boot camp and like I always want, like it does it does it worry you at all trying to go to a boot camp that was in California and then moving to uh, New York to try and get work? Uh, you know, it worries me a little bit, but I'm not counting on Hacker Actors' name to get me a job. I'm confident enough that you know, in a technical interview, I can I can show you what I can do. I'm not like relying on Hacker Actor for that. Um, but that being said, most of the recruiters that have been reaching out to me know it and the companies in new york you know hack reactor so i don't know if that's a result of their marketing team <laughs> or they just absorbed a few schools in new york but uh it's definitely not been a, a detriment so far nice nice uh, any anything that you wanted to cover about hack reactor or coding or anything like that um i i guess uh just my my advice if you are someone that's looking to make a career change and you are very, very self-motivated, then you can do it with free code camp. You know, there's nothing in a boot camp per se that you can't find online for free. But what does exist in the boot camp, and what was really important in deciding me to do it, is the people, uh, and especially at Hacker Actor, all of the instructors care like a lot about you. They're doing it, you know, to help you to get back, not not because of the money. Um, and the students like. Uh, it's something like a 3% admittance rate into Hack Reactor. I'm not sure of the exact number, but it's around there. So everyone that there is very, very smart, and they're all in it to do the same thing. So just sort of being in that environment, for me, there's no way what I could have gotten done in three months what I did. Nice. Now, what, um, people always are very curious about like this uh, entry-level salary. What entry-level salary are you hoping to, to get a job at uh, you know, re realistically in, uh, in New York now? So... You know, that's kind of like the lowest thing on my priority. 
uh, I kind of really fell in love with coding, even if I did get into it for more of a, a financial reason. Uh, and I really just, I want to work with really cool, smart people with, with tech that I think is cool. Uh, that being said, however, I'm looking into like 90 to 110, somewhere in there. There you go. That's, I mean, that's a, a healthy it's a, salary. It's a big jump. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in New York, you know, like I can't find a bedroom for less than 1300 a month. So it's all relative. Yeah, definitely. Uh, have you heard anything about Google? All right. This is a weird random question. I, I haven't heard anything about this, but uh, Jessica Rose asks, have you heard anything about Google denan denouncing coding boot camps and their hiring practices? No, I haven't. Uh, it's interesting, though, because someone from the cohort above me just started at Google like two weeks ago. So uh, I, I'm sure it's there's definitely truth to it, but I think it really matters how good you are rather than the boot camp itself. Yeah, and I think that really goes, I, I think um, you're in a, software is an industry where it's it's very um, contingent about uh, how motivated you are and uh, the individual much more than your experience and, and resume. And it's it's one of those things where like, if you can prove your value, um, software's uh, industry is very uh, accepting of that. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing, especially because there's a, there's a great, um, I guess, range in skill level, uh, as, at least in my cohort anyway. Uh, and if you're going to be the person that is going to be in the top 10% of your class, then I don't think you'll have any trouble finding a job. Uh, That's what it seems like so far anyway. Uh, Soriel Kanar says, you put all your go all your code, everything you do on GitHub, and would that be good for employers? Uh, I put most of my code on GitHub. There's still a lot of it that isn't. Um, and I don't think there's any downside to putting code on GitHub. A lot of people are like nervous to put like some of their first stuff on there because... Maybe it's not like the cleanest, or maybe it's there's like crazy, you know, O N squared time complexity all over the place. But uh, I mean, it's just it's growth, and employers can look at that and they know that this is not like production quality code. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's any downside unless you have like IP that you want to protect and you're you know maybe starting something up. But other than that, I don't think there's really any downsides. Now um, I'm gonna kind of change this question a little bit. Uh, Sumit Kumar is the origin of the question, uh, but he's asking about freelancing versus uh, working full time. Uh, have you, you ever considered maybe uh, doing freelance work? Uh, I mean, I've considered it sort of as like a side hustle. <laughs> uh, I, I'm much more interested in the security and the mentorship that comes from a full time gig. Like I said, I, I really just want to get really, really good. Um, I mean, I think I'm good now, but you know, you can always get better, especially if I can get that Haskell job. <laughs> yeah. But, and then, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, they mean to cut you off, but this is this is something we were talking about when the uh, before this interview started of the value of having a senior developer to like kind of leech off of a little bit because I mean, realistically, they probably charge a hundred dollars an hour, two hundred dollars an hour for a good senior dev, and you you get to sit right next to them and be like, hey, why does this not do this, or why does this work? Yeah, I, that's uh, and you know some people don't see the value in that, but that's always been, uh, you know, especially coming from culinary like I did, I know how to learn from people that are better than me. It's like my best skill, and that's why Hack Reactor was really good because you know in the beginning there's people that were a lot better than me, uh, but so yeah, I want to be next to that senior dev that like really knows their shit. All right, Yuri von Weissenhoven. I nailed that name. You did way. nail it. <laughs> um, uh, what are some things that you learned at the boot camp that you would find essential to be ready for the job market? Okay, um, that's sort of very specific to uh, like if you're looking for full stack jobs or front end jobs or back end jobs. But the one thing in general is testing. Write tests. Do it. Don't fall into the trap of not writing tests like, like I did for some things. Totally write tests for everything. Learn tests, learn uh, like continuous integration, like Travis CI is great. Uh, learn how to deploy to like AWS and Heroku and DigitalOcean. Uh, all that is not very essential, but it, there are things that will look very good on your resume. Uh, I mean, the thing that's essential is that you know how to code. You know, like know whatever language you pick, like front and back. Like if you're going to learn JavaScript, make sure you know ES6 and ES7, know how Clojure works, know how you know, function hoisting works, all of that. Be good at, at the language. Like, you can learn a framework in a couple of days, you know, at least enough to be productive. It's more important that you're just, like, really solid at computer science. 
Now, if someone's trying to make the transition from like a, because uh, you said you, you worked a little bit in IT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, are there any skills that kind of carried over that you thought, oh, this kind of helped or uh, is a nice to have? Uh, I think kind of the thinking is, is very similar, especially when you have a bug, like just kind of systematically working through, you know, trying every ethernet port, making sure there's nothing wrong with the operating system, et cetera, to, you know, um, is this variable undefined here because JavaScript is not typed? You know, uh, same sort of thing, same sort of methodical, you know, you can't get angry, that kind of thing. A lot of overlap in that regard. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a good question by Sumit Kumar. Um, what were some things you wish you knew before the boot camp, before going to a boot camp, and would advise your previous self uh, when you're about to start the boot camp? Uh, CSS. I spent a lot of time getting really good at JavaScript and sort of did everything that I was going to do in the first week. Um, I like I'm learning CSS more now. Like if you want to be a real badass, like learn your CSS media queries and how to do responsive CSS without Bootstrap. Um, that would be the thing. I mean, of course you can use Bootstrap, but most front end gigs want you to be really good at CSS. At least that's what it seems so far. Yeah, I'm I'm a I am a victim of bad CSS. So <laughs> I'd be like, Me yeah, too. it was Bootstrap, man. So, um, so yeah, there's definitely something where uh, I don't know. I, I just it doesn't appeal to me, and it's kind of weird because I'm a developer. It's not. I don't know. It's like different logic. It, CSS to me it feels like here, just memorize a bunch of stuff and put it together. Yes. Whereas like with programming, it's like here's your tool set. You're a, an engineer. You can you know how to do the things. It's probably why I like React a lot more than Angular too. See, I like, I just love the logic of it. Like, I'm very, I, that's the JavaScript. So the logic and the frameworks and connecting things and making it work. Mm -hmm. But then it's just like making it look pretty. Give that shit to a web designer. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. But uh, you know, whatever gets me a job, I can be picky once I'm already hired. Exactly. Like, uh, get your foot in the door and do what you need to do to get hired and. Um, you know, start make, making that money and getting that experience. Yeah, that's what it's all about. But yeah, CSS, I would say, is, is the big thing. I don't know if that's different for other boot camps, but there's not a lot of focus on it at all in Hack Reactor, so make sure you know it. And it's not, like, really hard either. It's just a matter of doing it. All right, uh, if people wanted to uh, follow you and kind of see what you're up to, where, where could they go? Uh, you could check out my blog. That's blog nicholasspinoza.com, which I can link in the chat. Uh, or you can be my 28th follower on Twitter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> At nickas.js. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I know I really did. And like some people may be a little thrown back that he's doing the interview in the kitchen, but I appreciate the hustle. I appreciate the grind. I've basically lived in a closet before, so I appreciate that he's staying at his buddy's house and moving his way up and going to New York and trying to do it big. And working hard, man. So uh, if you are interested in uh, following him, definitely do that. I think he's got a nice career headed for him in software and excited to find out how it goes. Uh, but as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. And for those of you who do, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you're interested in a coding boot camp, why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up, go, and immerse yourself in the environment. And if you want to support me, go over to patreon.com slash codingtutorials360 so we can put out more content. Thanks for watching.